Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. You're blessed, wonderful saints of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is once again a love slave of Jesus. Hallelujah. A bond servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am here to bring you the devotional of this very moment. In the previous devotionals, we were we we spoke about empires, kingdoms, and principalities. Empires, kingdoms, and principalities. There are a lot of things to cover, but we will talk about something else today, even as the Holy Spirit leads. We're, ta we're talking today about Jesus, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Yes, the wonderful Jesus, your King of Kings and your Lord of Lords. Don't you love him? I love, I love him so much. He's so wonderful. I love the Lord Jesus. I don't know what my life would be without this wonderful man. Don't know where I would be. I'm so glad he found me. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I found myself in him. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So the, the reason why it is very important for us to know who the Lord Jesus Christ is, because you are hit in Christ. Hit with Christ in God. Your identity and your life is hidden in Christ. So it is very important we understand what we are in and who the Lord Jesus Christ is, his position in God's empire and also his rank and his identity. Because as we get to know that, we, we get to understand and know what has been made available unto us. Available unto us. Thank you, precious Lord Jesus. Now, let us go to the book of Revelation. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We love you. We love you. We love you. Revelation chapter number one. Oh, wonderful Lord Jesus. Verses number five. Revelation chapter number one, verses number five. And I read now from the King James Version. It says, and from Jesus Christ. Oh, how I love that name. Who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings and priests <laughs> unto God and his father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. I read again Revelation 1, 5, it says, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first born or first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth. Unto him that loved us and washed us from our own sins in his own blood and has made us kings and priests unto God and his father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So now the Bible says that the Lord Jesus Christ, you see, he says he's a first begotten of the dead. First begotten of the dead or first born of the dead. And also the prince of the kings of the earth. Now the word, the prince of the kings of the earth, it is not the word prince that you know that I was talking about in a previous devotional. We're not talking about a prince that is uh, under the jurisdiction of a king. No. Here, that word in Greek, okay, it means ruler, commander, chief, or leader. In other words, the first in rank or power. So, it's talking about the ruler of the kings of the earth, the commander of the kings of the earth, the chief of the kings of the earth, or the leader of the kings of the earth. So saying Jesus is the ruler, the commander, the chief, and the leader of the kings of the earth. And it says, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, 
and has made us kings and priests. Hallelujah forevermore. Thank you, precious Lord Jesus. The Bible says that Jesus Christ washed us from our sins in his own blood. Washed us from our sins in his own blood. And after he washed us from our sins in his own blood, this is what happened to us when we were born anew, when we were born of God, by the Spirit of God, by the Father, when we were born again in Christ Jesus, this is what happened to us the very day that you were born of God, the very day you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ and you were born, the Bible says that He, you were born a king, it says, and has made us kings and priests unto God. And as Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Praise God. So, it is very important for us to understand that Jesus Christ did not wash us with his blood to just make us Christians. See that? He did not just wash us with his blood just for us to have relationship with him. Not just relationship, but the relationship is there. But... If, if you're not brought into the empire of God, there is no relationship for you. See that? One thing we must understand is that in a kingdom or an empire, your relationship with a king depends mostly on your position, on your rank. The, the king or the emperor will not have intimate fellowship with just a mere citizen of his kingdom or empire. But those that are in high position or rank, you will have close relationships with. Hallelujah. Thank you, precious Lord Jesus. Anyways, let's continue. The Bible says he has made us kings and priests. You are not just born again into a, a religion. You're not born again into a religion, into an organization, into just a church. But you are born as a king. You're born as a king, as a ruler. And if the Bible says that he made us kings, you cannot be a king without a kingdom. This would be false. It's like the Bible saying we are priests and yet we don't need to worship God. Or we are priests and yet we don't offer sacrifices that priests ought, ought to offer. See, you cannot be a doctor or call yourself a doctor but still um don't have the experience as a doctor or don't work as a doctor now god wouldn't say that we are kings and not give us dominion he wouldn't say that he has made us kings and not give us territories to rule over not give us a kingdom it won't be possible That would not be possible. It does not say that he will make us kings, but it says he has made us kings. This means that God doesn't just have one kingdom. God doesn't have a kingdom. <laughs> Praise God. Do you want to know how many kingdoms the Lord has? If you're able to count the number of people that were saved in the Old Testament and were washed by the blood of Jesus after the Lord Jesus Christ died and rose again. And also the number of people that have been washed by the blood of Jesus the past thousand years after the Lord Jesus Christ went to heaven. And the number of people that are washed by the blood of Jesus Christ today. And the number of people that will be washed by the blood of Jesus Christ in the years to come before he comes, you will know the amount and the number of kingdoms that God our Father has. 
His kingdoms, he has many kingdoms and there is no end. That is why the Bible says the government shall be upon his shoulder. When you check very well in the Hebrew, sometimes the word that they use for that word government in Hebrew, they use also the word empire. So of the increase of his empire, empire, you know, the empire shall be upon his shoulder. See, say the government of the empire shall be upon his shoulder. In other words, God's empire shall be upon the Lord Jesus Christ's shoulder. And of the increase of it, there shall be no end. God our Father has many, 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 many kingdoms. <laughs> Oh, praise God. You thought that Jesus came to die to make you a religious person. Thought he came to die to make you a good person. You thought he came to die to um, just forgive you your sins. But God is big. Why did he make Adam? Is it let us make man? Genesis 1, 26. And God said, and God said, he spoke out of his mouth. The father said to the Godhead, God said, let us make man in our image according to his likeness. He made known his intent. Who knows the mind of God? For we have the mind of Christ, the Bible says. Now having the mind of Christ, we're able to understand the purposes, the intents, the motives, the original purpose of God. His eternal purpose. Praise God. And now God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. God's original purpose was to have a man who is his expression, who is a ruler just like himself. Through this man would all the virtues of God, his excellence, his, his splendor, his beauty, his glory would be expressed through that man. And this man would be a ruler just as God is a ruler. Is that let them have dominion. It's very interesting to say, let us make man. And then after it says, let them have dominion. Now let us make man, it looks like a singular and now it says, let them have dominion. It looks like it's plural. So what was he talking about? It was talking about the race of man. The race of man. In other words, every human being that would come out of the loins of Adam would be just like Adam. Would have the image and likeness of God and would have dominion upon the earth just as Adam had dominion upon the earth. Hallelujah. So now God was making a race of kings, a race of rulers. But the first ruler, okay, of the chief ruler was to be the first man that was Adam. God gave him his headquarters, which was Eden, the Garden of Eden. That was his headquarters. And the Bible says, God said, have dominion. Now Adam was given a kingdom. Do you see that? It's only kings that have all authority. When you hear the word kingdom, what should go to your mind right away, or empire, what should go to your mind right away that in a kingdom, there is one person that has all authority and all power. That is a king. And in an empire, there is one person that has all authority and all power. That is the emperor. In a principality, there is one person that has all of her, that is a prince, a ruling under the king. Praise God. So Adam had, God gave all authority, all the authority of the earth to Adam. So Adam would give birth to kings who would be rulers, but Adam would be the chief ruler over these kings. In other words, it would be like an emperor of the end. There would be many kingdoms upon the earth. But all these kingdoms on the earth will be the kingdoms of our God. Revelation is said, and the kingdoms of, these world, of this world, they have become the kingdom of our God. Do you see that? 
God doesn't just have one kingdom. <laughs> Glory to God forevermore. And now the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says he has made us kings. In other words, he has made us kings. We have been restored back to the original state, but even higher. We'll get to that after. He has made us kings. So we have kingdoms that belongs to us. We are rulers. Adam was born, was made, made to be a ruler. It was made to be a ruler. So he has made us kings. We have kingdoms that our father has prepared for us before the foundation of the world. When you read very well in the, in the book of Matthew chapter 5, when Jesus was speaking a parable, says, talking about the future, said the king will set unto, uh, 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 unto his servants, or unto us receive the kingdom that was prepared for you before the world began. So in eternity, there will be a kingdom that will be given to each one of us. Anyways, many of us will not believe that, but you are not just made a king on the earth. You are a king for eternity. It's not just something temporary, but he has made you an eternal king. Why? Because God is eternal. He is, he's the eternal king of kings. So if he is an eternal king of kings, the eternal king of kings, the same way you are an eternal king, that is who and how he has made you. In the book of 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses number 14, he said, That thou keep this commandment without spot, un unrebukable, until the appearing, it says, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which in his times he will show who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who only has a mortality dwelling in the light which no man can approach, unto whom no man has seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. So it says here that the Lord Jesus Christ, when he comes, is going to reveal God unto us. The Lord Jesus Christ reveals our Father. And it says our Father is the only potentate, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. King of kings and Lord of lords. But he's an eternal king of kings and lord of lords. He's the eternal king of kings and lord of lords. And Jesus has made us kings and priests unto his God and his father. So we are kings of, under the authority of, of, of God in Christ. And priests under the authority of God in Christ. But the same scripture also calls our Lord Jesus Christ in the book of Revelation. Revelation 19, verse 16, it says, And he has on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. That is also the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So now the Bible calls him King of Kings and Lord of Lords. But he is also the eternal King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Now, this is very interesting. Our Father is a King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And the Lord Jesus Christ is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We'll get more into that. But it's, we must understand that we are not just in a kingdom. Why? Because you are a king. You have a kingdom that belongs to you personally. A domain that your father has given to you. But he has an empire because there are many kingdoms under his authority. You must also consider the fact that the earth was not the only planet that was created. There are many, many, many galaxies. Millions. That exist. And we shouldn't think for a second that we are the only creatures living on a planet. There are other creatures living on different planets that we don't know. That we don't know anything about. Praise God. But there are many planets that exist. God is wonderful. 
He has no problem giving a man a planet. The first gift he gave to a man or the man was the entire world. So it's not a big deal for God to give <laughs> you a territory to rule over. Now religion, of course, will, will make you think that you are just born to stay in a church to just sing songs and, and just praise God. That is all. That is also part of it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now the Bible makes us understand Jesus Christ is also the King of Kings. That is his position. So he's not just a king. He is the King of Kings. In other words, the Lord Jesus Christ is an emperor. He's a king maker. He makes kings. So he made us kings. It's only an emperor that can make kings, that can give birth to kings. Do you see that? If you're not an, the, the moment you are a king of kings, this means you're an emperor. And you're, you cannot ordain or make someone a king if you don't have a territory for them to rule over, a domain for them to rule over. Back then in the Roman Empire, whenever they would subdue a territory, a kingdom, the emperor that was sitting in the imperial city, in the city of Rome, Italy. In Italy, the capital, the emperor normally would give authority of a kingly power, of a kingly authority. The authority to rule over a kingdom, the royal power, it will confer it upon someone and then this person becomes a king. Then he sends that person onto that territory to reign there. So that territory of that domain becomes the kingdom of that man. It becomes his kingdom. But now he is under the authority of the emperor because the emperor has all authority. Do you remember Jesus, our Lord, after he died and he rose from the dead? It says, all authority on earth and in heaven has been what? Given unto me. In other words, every planet, every universe, everything God has created or God created, every creature that God made living on other planets, including human beings. Now Jesus came down as a man, died, rose again, highly exalted at the right hand of God. And he received all authority. God put his signet ring upon the fingers of the Lord Jesus Christ, even as Pharaoh put his ring on the fingers of Joseph and made Joseph the ruler over the entire land of Egypt. Now the Father has made the Lord Jesus Christ the ruler over his universe. He has placed everything under the feet of the Lord Jesus and has given all authority to the Lord Jesus Christ seated at his right hand. So unless the Lord Jesus Christ gives you authority, you don't have the authority. Unless he gives you a domain, a territory, you don't have it. Now we must understand very well that the earth doesn't belong to the devil. It's not his. Jesus said, all authority on the earth has been given unto me. The devil is no longer, he used to be. The kingdoms of this world used to be his. That's why when he tempted the Lord Jesus, he said, the kingdoms are mine. But now... The kingdoms belongs to our God, but it does not yet appear that all things are under his feet. This is why we are here on the earth as kings. See that? To bring the dominion of God, his rulership. But we must be trained. But reigning on earth is just a training that we're going through for eternal reigning. Hallelujah to Jesus forevermore. Thank you, Lord. Now, I want us to see something. What I want us to understand is that the Lord Jesus Christ did not, because he is king of kings, but initially he was not the king of kings. I'm talking about the Lord Jesus Christ when he came as a man. He was not 
king of kings. He started as a king. As a king. This is how he started. He was born first as a king. Matthew 2 verses 1. It says, Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that where is he born king of the Jews? Where is he born king of the Jews? Praise God. Where is he born king of the Jews? So now the Lord Jesus Christ, when he was born on earth, he was born as a king. Remember, it wasn't just a prophet or a pastor, apostle, bishop, a teacher. He was greater than all these. He was born a king. He was born a king. He first started as a king. He first started as a king when he came as a man. <laughs> Hallelujah. Before he could have other kings under his domain. So he was first a king on the earth. But while it was written, huh? oh, thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. So he went from kingship to being an emperor. The father exalted him from just being a king. To the position of the emperor at his right hand. Where all authority is given unto him. We will continue in the next devotional. Stay blessed. Remember, you are not just in a kingdom. The father, I mean the father doesn't just have a kingdom. He's big. He has millions of kingdoms. He has millions of kingdoms. And there are millions of Billions of rulers under him. Under him. So he has a vast, a huge empire. Huge empire. Vast empire. Very vast. <laughs> Hallelujah. Wow. Wow. But in this empire, you have a kingdom assigned to you. But... You cannot really reign if you don't seek to know that kingdom that belongs to you. If you don't seek to know his ways of doing things, his righteousness. Hallelujah. We shall continue in the next devotional. Stay blessed. You see, there are things that are heavenly that the Lord could not really talk about. The Lord told Nicodemus, if I talk to you about earthly things, merely things about being born again, you don't understand. How can you understand when I talk to you about heavenly things? Heavenly things. There are many things pertaining to heaven, our eternal calling. But we must understand that. And the Lord is bringing these revelations in the body of Christ in the last days. Stay blessed. Enjoy this. Let us sink into your heart. Goodbye. Our King of Kings. And you're a Lord of Lords. Don't you love him? I love I love him so much. He's so wonderful. I love the Lord Jesus. I don't know what my life would be without this wonderful man. I don't know where I would be. I'm so glad he found me. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I found myself in him. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So the, the reason why it is very important for us to know who the Lord Jesus Christ is, because you are hid in Christ. Hid with Christ in God. Your identity and your life is hidden in Christ. So it is very important we understand what we are in and who the Lord Jesus Christ is, his position in God's empire and also his rank and his identity, because as we get to know that we, we get to born of the dead and also the prince of the kings of the earth. Now the word, the prince of the kings of the earth, it is not the word prince that you know that I was talking about in a previous devotional. We're not talking about a prince that is uh, under the jurisdiction of a king. No. Here that word in Greek, okay, it means ruler, commander. Chief or leader. In other words, the first in rank or power. So it's talking about 
the ruler of the kings of the earth, the commander of the kings of the earth, the chief of the kings of the earth, or the leader of the kings of the earth. So saying Jesus is the ruler, the commander, the chief, and the leader of the kings of the earth. And it says, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and has made us kings and priests. Hallelujah for him. That loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and has made us kings and priests. <laughs> unto God and his father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. I read again Revelation 1 5. It says, And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the firstborn or first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our own sins in his own blood and has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So now the Bible says that the Lord Jesus Christ, you see, it says he's a first begotten of the dead. First begotten of the dead or first understand and know what has been made available unto us. Available unto us. Thank you, precious Lord Jesus. Now, let us go to the book of Revelation. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We love you. We love you. We love you. Revelation chapter number one. Oh, wonderful, Lord Jesus. Verses number five. Revelation chapter number one, verses number five. And I read. Now, from the King James Version, it says, And from Jesus Christ, oh, how I love that name, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. You are blessed, wonderful saints of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is once again, a love slave of Jesus. Hallelujah. A bond servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am here to bring you the devotional of this very moment. In the previous devotionals, we, were, we, we spoke about empires, kingdoms, and principalities. Empires, kingdoms, and principalities. There are a lot of things to cover, but we will talk about something else today, even as the Holy Spirit leads. We're, ta we're talking today about Jesus, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Yes, the wonderful Jesus. Your 